I am looking for my little children that are going to recite the 23rd Psalm for me. Come on up. Come on up here, kids. Thank you. We want you to be by this mic. Okay. Go start? Okay. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valleys, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all of the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you so much. Let's give the kids a big hand. Thank you, kids. That was wonderful. You may be seated now. And thank you to my shepherd and my little, little uh, sheep there, little Noreen. She has decided that maybe she has another grandmother, and I'm honored to, do, to be, um, be part of that. So sometimes we become mothers or grandmothers without even knowing it. Am I still on? Okay, great. Well, happy Mother's Day. Yay, happy Mother's Day. How many of you learned the 23rd Psalm when you were a child? Have, see some hands, yes. Many of us knew that. And it is a beautiful poem written by David. David had the knowledge to write the 23rd Psalm because he was a shepherd. The 23rd Psalm though actually it's not used very often at, uh, in a Sunday morning service. You know where it's usually used? Maybe the most, most of the time it is heard at a funeral. But I thought that because this is very appropriate for Mother's Day, because the shepherd's love is so comparable to the love of a mother. Today, I pray as we go through this beautiful poem, we can truly see how much David knew he was loved, and we can experience that same love. The Lord is my shepherd. What is a shepherd? Traditionally, we would say it is one that watches over the sheep or the flock. Oftentimes, Jesus referred to us as his flock, as well as a pastor sees their congregation as their flock. Moms also have a big responsibility working over their flock. I came from a family of 12. You can imagine what we were like for my mother to watch over. Goodness, so we, thank goodness we had older siblings to help out. I shall not want. Well, Lord, I shall not want. It seems like we're always wanting, right? Well, what I pray that we would want more of is for us to trust the Word of God and to know him better. Because he will never leave us or forsake us. It's comforting to know that we have to want. There's a story about homeless children after the war. They were placed in camps, and they were well fed and taken care of, but they couldn't sleep at night. They just struggled with sleeping at night. So a psychologist came up with the idea to give them a piece of bread. Now this piece of bread they had to hold. They could eat more if they wanted to, but this particular piece of bread they needed to hold um, all through the night. And it worked wonderfully. They went to sh sleep because they knew they weren't worried. That they, they knew that they would have something else to eat. The sheep had their shepherd, 
and moms, I, I say moms, the comparison's there, we fill the lunch pail for her flock for school for the next day. We know that we, for like Brian, Pastor Brian says, mothers mostly do this, and I'm not, because it's Mother's Day, we're not disallowing fathers and their participation, but we're, we, when we say this, we're just gonna say mostly mothers do that for our kids. He makes me lie down in green pastures. It is said that the sheep starts out early in the morning to graze, the shepherd starts out early in the morning to graze his sheep. And the sheep walk around and eat steadily until the shepherd gathers them together to rest in the green pastures. Shepherds know that sheep must not drink when it's hot, nor should their stomachs be filled with undigestive grass. Mom, what do you think? It sounds like nap time to me. Seriously, there are times when we all need to lie down in those green pastures. I grew up in an uh, acreage outside of Sandpoint, and we had the most wonderful meadow. And I would always refer and think about going down there. I don't know about you, but one of my favorite things to do on a beautiful day with blue sky and clouds is to lay down in that green pasture and look up into the sky and just find those clouds that resemble that animal or whatever, but a place to, to rest, a to place to be safe. He leads me beside the still waters. Do you know that sheep are terrified of moving water? Do you know that? They cannot swim, and they know they can't swim. Their heavy wool coat would become so heavy they would actually sink. Think about that, all that wool on there. I thought it was very interesting when Bill and I served as missionaries in Tonga. They have a different culture, and the, most of the girls, they would not be able to wear swimsuits. They had to go in swimming with fully clothed. Believe it or not, it was not believe it or not, it was sad, I was sad to say that some of those young people died because their clothes and shoes and everything weighted them down. Well, the sheep knew that he didn't want to be around that moving water. So they wouldn't drink for, from it, so the shepherd, if he couldn't find still water, he would actually make a little dam, like build up a rock or create a pond so they could, so the sheep could not be afraid and drink. Um, water, to me, can be terrifying. Um, I have had many close calls, and I'm especially fearful when watching people kayak on the river rapids. I just get emotionally uh, fearful, and I, I, so I can kind of relate to that. I had a traumatic uh, experience when my two-year-old grandson, Stephen, decided to run full speed ahead to our pond. This was many, many years ago. And I was right behind him as he jumped into the muddy cold water. As I pulled him out and took him back to our house, I was shaking with fear and cold. But Stephen and I did win the first man in the pond that year. <laughs> we joke about it, but it could have been disastrous. So water can be. Uh, very serious and dangerous place. I, I was so thankful for God watching over us, <clears throat> and I believe that God does lead us and ministers continually to our needs, if we are, and ministers to our needs. If we are stressed out, visualize those waters and let the sheep calm us. He restores my soul. David knew that each morning the sheep would take their place in line and basically hold their position as they went about grazing. But the sheep would leave their place in line during the day at some point to go visit the shepherd. The shepherd would encourage them by rubbing the sheep's nose, scratching their ears, and just kind of whispering to nice things to the sheep. And he would go back into his place in line. God has ways to restore our soul and encourage us when we are not down. As moms, we show our love and encouragement through hugs, pats on the back, and words. I have had the blessing of visiting the Holy Land. Okay, I'm sorry. When he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. I have had the blessing of visiting the Holy, Holy Land 
And if you visited Israel or have seen pictures of it, you might notice it would be easy to get lost. Lots of the same looking hills of sand and canyons. David knew the sheep had no sense of direction and that they had very poor eyesight. The fields were covered with narrow and dangerous paths and obstacles. But the sheep trusted the shepherd to lead them safely to the green meadows and the still water. When we follow Jesus, he will lead us to a right relationship with him and peace. How often? Have you seen a teacher, I think it's so cute, when you see a teacher or a daycare or teacher leading a line of young children holding on to the ro ro uh, rope as they enjoy an outing. Have you seen that before? It, it is so sweet, and we know that they are protecting those. But moms, we are leading our children. Are we leading them to Jesus? That's the question we can ask. Are we leading them in the right, on the right paths? A big responsibility. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. This is a tough, tough thought. But we all face day, death at some point in our life. It is hard. It can be overwhelming to lose a loved one or to face our own death. But this verse reassures us that our shepherd is all, always with us. As we celebrate mothers, we also grieve with those who have lost their mother and for the mothers who have lost a child. We can hold on to the hope and the word that we will meet again. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. As you saw Cameron out here with that big, um, that big staff, I didn't have the, you know, it's sometimes when I was confused at one time that your rod and your staff, it's two different things, but they had a, uh, uh, something that would look like a club and it was, uh, it was two to three feet long and because the sheep are helpless, they use that when the wolves or the, the predators that would come after them, they could take that and, and defend um, the, the flock from the wild beasts of the field. And then the staff, those looked really big, but they were. They were about eight feet long and with the hook on the end. And sheep had, because uh, they couldn't see very well and they were kind of out of order sometimes, they would get off the edge of the cliff and they'll fall, they would fall down. So the shepherd was able to take that uh, staff and put it around the sheep and pull it up from that danger of falling clear down into the canyon. Um, sometimes I think I know that I have appreciated when the Good Shepherd has pulled me back on that path. Don't we all feel like sometimes we need to be kind of pulled back on that path a little bit? The staff, uh, the shepherd was also um, very concerned about, about that, but he, he was always there for his sheep. So think about that beautiful picture. And when we are off to the side, I, I think that we have all heard the saying, the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. Sometimes we can be that way too, right? We can go off and find out it's really not greener, but we are thankful that we have a loving Father who will pull us back in and get us onto that narrow path, the path that he wants us to be, be on. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. According to my readings, the pastures in the Holy Land grew poisonous plants which were fatal to the sheep if they ate them. They would die. There were also plants with sharp thorns that would hurt the sheep. The shepherd would clean uh, the pastures each spring to make a safe grazing ground for the sheep to eat. He therefore could destroy, he destroyed the enemies, the weeds and the poison things, and prepared a table for them. Nowadays, this has to be done for our children. We have to be diligent to make sure they are safe from the enemies and the evil of this world. We talked about that in our Sunday school class this morning. There are so many things out there for our young people today. 
and I really, he, the young parents, mothers and the young parents in my prayers, that they would be able to keep um, their children from those evils. I like this. Moms can become like the angry bear in um, Hosea 13, 8. And I miss Andrea this morning because I put in here, watch out for the mama bears. We'll do anything to protect our kids. And we know, we know that. And uh, we appreciate that about Andrea and all of the moms. We know we will do anything to protect our kids. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The sheep would run around and they'd often cut themselves on sharp rocks or thorns, they'd get thorns in their head. And every night when the, sheep, the shepherd would bring the sheep in, they would examine to see if they had any, any wounds or anything that needed to be taken care of. And they would, uh, if they did, they'd pull out their healing oil and apply it to their wounds. And then they'd also uh, see this picture of this, this big, big thing of water and had a cup. And he would take that cup and fill it, and the sheep could drink that nice, cool water. Moms, we've all experienced our kids running to us with their owies. It was our job to kiss the owie and sometimes even add some ointment, that healing oil. What a privilege it is to be a mother. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. This is one of my favorite verses. It's easy for me to personalize it, and it often I use it to help people remember my name. Only, only joke. I do do that, but it, it, what a positive thing to say. David was actually an old man when he wrote the 23rd Psalm, and he had assurance that God was always with him. He had experienced his loving care. What a wonderful thing to meditate on and thank God for. What if we did every day say, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, reaffirming that we will have that goodness and mercy that God has for us. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David knew the shepherd. He knew without a shadow of a doubt that he would dwell in the house of the Lord forever. My heart aches for the lost that have no hope because they do not know the shepherd. The question I have this morning is, do you know the shepherd? Have you experienced his incredible care and protection? For the last several weeks, Pastor Ed has been doing a series of sermons on knowing God, not just knowing about him. Do you really know him? Not just know of him, but do you really know him? John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten, one and only begotten Son, for whoever loves him will not perish but have eternal life. And whoever believes in him shall not perish and have eternal life. In John 3, he talks to Nicodemus. I always thought this was such a great thing because Jesus um, told Nicodemus, you must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. And of course, Nicodemus replied, how can a man be born again when he's old? Surely he cannot enter a second time into the mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to the spirit. 
In Luke 15, 4, Jesus talks about the lost sheep. One sheep is lost, and the man leaves 99 and seeks the lost sheep until he finds it. The man brings the lost sheep on his shoulder, calls friends and neighbors together to rejoice. Joy shall be given in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. The good news of the gospel is that you can know the shepherd. If you don't really know the shepherd and want to be part of his flock, I would encourage you this day to pray. Confess you are a sinner. The word says we have all sinned and fall short. The Nazarene church believes that there's original sin and personal sin, but we have all sinned. Ask Jesus to forgive you and ask him to come into your life. Moms, I believe we can totally claim the promise of God's word when we pray for our children that are lost because he says he gives us the desires of our heart. It is his desire, too, that no one shall be lost, that we should all know him. How do you really get to know him? How do you get to know anyone? You spend time with them. I would encourage you to spend time with him in prayer. Spend time in the Word. Study the Word. Fill yourself every day to overflowing with the divine presence and power of the Holy Spirit. He loves us so very much. And I know that he wants us to really know him, love him, and spend time together. As a mother, and I am pleased that my two children are here with me this morning. What a blessing they are. I have two children, six grandchildren, six great-grandchildren. It is awesome. It is absolutely awesome. What a blessing. But mothers, we have so much that we can do. We are such an important part. And for some of you, I love the prayer Diane said this morning. Some of you that haven't been a mom, but you've been like a mom, right? You have odd opportunities. And we are so thankful for those. I've asked my friend Linda Bolden, she, uh, who is a mother, to share just briefly with us this morning. And as Linda comes up, come on up, Linda. Um, we're going to have a few pictures as she's coming up, and then she's going to... Um, She's going to come up and share. Come on. Hopefully we can turn the other mic back on. Am I doing it while Yeah, the that's fine. Just go ahead. While and do the it. pictures? Okay. Okay. So Shirley asked me to um, come up here, first of all, because I am a mom. And uh, also to give moms and grandmas some encouragement. So uh, there's three things that God has um, guided me through motherhood with, and I want to share those with you. First one is pray, which I probably don't even need to say that, but don't give up praying. Don't give up praying, especially for the, you know, the salvation of your kids and your grandkids. There's a verse that several years ago I was reading um, the word, and God gave me this verse, and um, I want to share it with you. It's Isaiah 59, 1 says, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. And sometimes when we get discouraged, 
You know, because our, you know, kids, especially now when our kids are little is one thing, but when they're out of the house, it's even scarier. When they get, we think it'll be easier when they grow up. Well, it's, it's, I think we worry more even after they've grown up. But God has reminded me of that verse so many times because his arm is not too short. He, he's, he is right there waiting for them to, to come to him. And um, I have experienced living proof of that in my life, that God has been faithful in my family. And the second thing is to keep an open door in your relationship for, for listening. I know that um, sometimes I'm too quick to jump in as moms. You know, we want to jump in and fix the problem. They come to us and talk to us, and we want to fix it. But really all we need to be is a sounding board. And sometimes I've been too quick to just try to give the solution and not the... Uh, and not just listen, and that's really important. The, th- the third one was that probably, the, and I feel like this is so important, it's living out your faith in Jesus in front of your kids. Talk about your faith and share how God has helped you in your walk. You know, if we don't share with them about how God's been faithful in our life, you know, they, how are they going to know they can go to God for those things as well? If they don't see how faith really works in real life, why would they want to accept it? If they don't see it works for you or how it's working for you, why would they want that for themselves? Talk about God's word and how it affects your daily life. Deuteronomy 6, um, 6, 6 says, These commandments that I give to you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk to them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. We are the first line of defense for our kids. You know, they go out into this evil, secular world, and we are the prey people. We're the first ones to, that we need to be there to, um, to uh, protect them, to uh, pray for them when they're not with us. And in, in the first line of defense in a secular world that wants the hearts and minds of our children, they want our kids, and we need to be there for them and telling them how God can be with them in their lives. I haven't done everything right, <laughs> far from it, but God still works and God still reaches, even if our kids are grown and, and we don't think we have much influence, but, but we really do. There was a, I saw somebody with a, a t-shirt and I wrote this on a board in my house to remember. It says, stand firm, never settle, and pray big. Ask God for big things, and he answers. He does. What? Thank you, Linda. Good. Good job. <laughs> Wonderful. I just want one other thing to share with you. It's called A Higher Love, and uh, it's, it's while, we are rightly, while we rightly honor the unique bond between a mother and child, our culture and ourself often defy a mother's love as sacred on its own accord. But the gospel reminds us that unless our loves are generated by the subject to Christ, and subject by Christ, that even the deepest loves will become warped by sin. In fact, in C.S. Lewis, The Great Divorce, we see precisely the scene play out that the once pure love of a mother has been corrupted into something selfish and destructive. The, this message can, is one that includes everyone we when we uh, with our first devotion is to christ all our other loves become filled with him so mothers just fill yourself with christ fill yourself with him each and every day and you will be that mother that you should be we're going to have a really short video just a few minutes and then we will wrap up It's Mother's Day, a time to celebrate all the wonderful mothers out there, not just for being shining examples of how great a mom can be, but also for being beautiful reflections of who God is. Like God, you've provided for us. You've shown us how much you care from the very beginning. With God, you've guided us helping us navigate through every decision, big or small. You've been patient with us, 
helping us grow and learn from the mistakes we make. And like God, you forgive us, offering us grace so those mistakes can never define us. You've been present. It sounds so simple, but it's so important just knowing you're there when we need you. And most of all, you've loved us unconditionally as only someone filled with God's love could. So today we thank you, moms, for all of this and so much more. Happy Mother's Day. As Pastor Ed said, not a one of us would be here without a mom. As we celebrate Mother's Day today, we want you to know that you're loved. And it's wonderful to be a mom. So kids, we love our jobs. And we just want to pray for you now. Father God, we just ask that you would be with the moms, the grandmas, the great grandmas. Um, be, with, be with all of them, the stepmoms, the Every mom that is out there, Father, we just pray that you would just guide and direct and just fill them to overflowing with your love that transponds anything we can even imagine. Father, go with us this day. Help us to have wonderful uh, times if our moms are here or with, with our families. Just bless it. And Father, we are just going to give you the glory and thanksgiving for everything in our lives. You are dismissed, but before you leave, pick up um, a gift in the foyer. I think uh, we have some um, potted uh, flowers out there for the moms, and also Brian has something for you for the moms from the kids. So go and have a wonderful Mother's Day. Thank you.